Good morning, good afternoon and good evening. Welcome to the first of two sessions hosted jointly by the Donkey Sanctuary and Wardle's Welfare and illustrating the critical relationship between working animals and water. This relationship is often hidden in plain sight. It's visible in photographs and video footage showing horses, mules and donkeys carrying panniers or pulling carts to supply this vital resource but it's only beginning to be included in the wider discussion. In today's session, we will introduce ways in which working animals contribute within communities, not only as an integral mode of transport, but also as facilitators of income generation, adaptation to the challenges of climate change, and in general, social resilience. We begin with a short film illustrating these ways. Collection of fresh, clean water forms a significant part of daily life for many communities worldwide, ensuring supply for both agricultural and household use. Working animals support community resilience, well-being, water access and water security. They offer a lifeline to remote communities, often across otherwise inaccessible terrain. In this video, we introduce the important relationship between water, working animals and the people who are dependent on them. Today, the challenges of water availability and climate change affect both humans and animals alike. But across the world, working animals are playing a key role in the distribution of water. Working animals are often the primary transport for communities to collect water for cooking and hygiene. They can offer the advantage of a reduced time and labour for people, collecting larger volumes of water more quickly. They are often more affordable or better suited to certain types of terrain compared to mechanical vehicles. Working animals support practical household needs and livelihoods, offering opportunities for additional income. In some communities, working animals are empowering women to create a source of income and to reduce their time spent collecting water. Working animals are also still widely used to support agricultural production. The existence of many families around the world is supported by their working animals. Yo pues tengo negocio que mi familia mantengo mi familia con mi tengo he tenido tres caballos y pues no con esto me gano la vida mantengo mi familia le vendo agua a las demás personas verdad y y para nuestro hogar también. Working animals are a key part of lives and livelihoods. They can be a tool to build resilience and aid adaptation. But in times of crisis, the loss of working animals through poor health or compromised welfare can be extremely detrimental to the health of the households who rely on them. The relationship between human welfare, animal welfare and water is interlinked. Animal charities recognise the vital partnership of working animals and the families that depend on them for accessing water and other essential resources. In recognition of this, we are looking to engage with water stakeholders to highlight the critical role working animals play in supporting community livelihoods. The establishment of inclusive policy is essential to ensure that, with their welfare needs at the forefront, Working animals can fulfill the vital task of providing water to communities.
We are now going to continue our journey into discovering how working animals help build resilience and deliver for sustainable development with a chat with Danilo Rodriguez. Danilo, thank you for joining us for this session. First of all, thank you. please shortly introduce yourself. Well, my name is Danilo Rodriguez. I'm the Reno coordinator for Haiti, uh, Mexico, and the Cuba projects. And um, I support the local teams in implementing uh, equine welfare projects. Um, I'm the I'm, I'm I'm helping them with um, with the implementation of the projects, with the with the delivery of the impact indicators, and also to um, establish how we can continue to support the communities and the and the working equines that um, that are uh, uh, working in the country. Thank you. We previously touched on the role of working animals through the videos that we've seen before, uh, the role that working animals play within the climate change dialogue and development. But now I would like to ask you, how do working animals help these communities you work with adapt to the challenges of resource security and climate change specifically? Well, you know, they they end up in in a lot of ways. Um, the first of all is uh, resource availability. I think um, it is it is key for them to access water, to access um, you know uh, soil conditions, uh, to access areas where 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 they can gather you know firewood, and and these are you know resources that can be accessed only through the support of working equines because of the conditions. Of the of the environment because of the conditions of the topography of the areas where they work in, or the conditions of of their you know social and, and economic um, you know um, variables. Um, also, you know they support quite a bit because they are a low cost transport um, alternative, and 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 it's something that they don't have to worry about, um, and 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 they can rely on those working equines. Um, that's one of the key. Um, uh, things that you know, working equines provide is, is a is a reliable way of transporting, of you know supporting those communities. They know that they can depend on working equines to to continue to access those you know needed resources that they that they that they need to have for their agricultural systems and also for the livelihood systems. And also you know they support in terms of. Um, you know the use of byproducts. You know, I think uh, you know that's something that most people don't know or 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 or, or they know they are not aware of. That working equines also have a lot of byproducts. For example, you know, you know their their um, you know equine uh, you know feces. You know, they can be used for agriculture as well. Um, you know, working equines can be part of a sustainable. Agriculture system where where you know nothing gets you know uh, thrown out and and you know it can be used sustainable to to continue uh, you know helping the communities and to and to and to raise livestock and to and to produce uh, crops. Thank you, Danilo. That's very interesting. So, give, so you mentioned transportation and also byproducts. Could you please provide some additional example of the roles working animals play in resilient responses and any other relevant issues that you can think of? Well, you know, in, in terms of resilient responses, for example, I have two examples that are very uh, specific. Uh, for example, the volcano eruption that we had in Guatemala in 2017. Um, actually, working icons were in the forefront of getting uh, the the support needed to the communities that were affected by the ash. I mean, uh, you couldn't have, you know, cars. You couldn't have, you know, pickup trucks going out there because of all the ash. And 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 the only way to transport, you know, much needed resources was with uh, was with equines. So that's so that's one way that they can uh, support uh, communities and and you know build up upon their their resilience. Also, you know, you have uh, earthquake responses, for example, in Haiti, um, just, you know, last week, uh, well, you know, uh, you know, just a couple of days ago, they have an earthquake also in Haiti and, and, and you know, equines, uh, you know, donkeys, uh, horses, mules have been used to 
gather uh, resources and to and to and to transport them to the communities in need. So, so these are ways of 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 that equines can be part of that resilient responses can be part of that resiliency framework that the communities that live in these um, areas need because you know you have a lot of uh, natural not disasters, you have you know, earthquakes, you have volcanoes, you have flooding, and you know the only way to to move resources or to or to continue communicating with uh, with with the rest of the world is with working equine. So so they are uh, an integral part of uh, of a resilient response of 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 that resiliency framework that the communities need to be able to live in these areas that are you know, so hard hit by these uh, natural disasters. You have to use, you know, natural resources. You have to yeah. access the water, access food. And imagine having, having, um, trying to get water in an emergency situation, for example, in, 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 in an earthquake situation where you are not going to have people or, or, you know, roads going into communities, for example, you're not going to have the, the, the the availability of water for example if you don't have uh, you know a road connecting to your communities and if you don't have a working equine i mean you're not going to access the well that is you know five miles or ten miles away so i mean you know you, you have to you have to have an equine and and that's why people are so keen on it and 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 we see that that for example in haiti that they have you know so few resources but still try to manage their claim the best as possible absolutely thank you very much these two examples are incredibly important quite powerful i would say and um, because they illustrate beautifully how working animals help communities that are facing um, urgent issues like an earthquake and um, a volcano explosions so given what you've just explained how would you describe the impact that losing or not having at all like working animals may have on communities that rely on them? Oh, it's devastatingly. It's, 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 you know, not having a working equine means, you know, not providing food to your, your family. I mean, that's, you know, as simple as that, or, or not providing water to your family. It's as simple as that. I mean, you know, these are communities where we work in, where, where you have, um, well maybe it's you know five miles from your home you know 10 miles from your home and and you know the only way that you can you know transport that water is through the back of working equine so so not having uh, um, a working equine you know available to the families is is is, is a devastating um, consequence and, and 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 it's something that you know people understand and you know that's why they 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 care of their equines and 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 they worry what happened to them and 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 within their resources availability and with their knowledge they try to to take care of them as best as possible you know because of that you know lack of you know knowledge or lack of resources you know they not always you know do the best job but that's where we 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 get in and and, and, we, and we and we tell them you know how to how to do it better we give them that support framework um because you know losing uh, you know losing an equine i mean it's not just the economic game but it's but it's the way of that they can live in the areas where they are living you know these are areas that are very mountainous you don't have a lot of natural resources and you need you need a, um, a re reliable way to access them and 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 you know equines give them that opportunity. And if you don't have any equines, you know, basically, you know, you cannot live in, in, in the areas where, where, where they are. Wow, thank you very much, Danilo. And um, right from the beginning, when you mentioned food and water, that, um, that's quite a, it's quite a sign on how uh, working animals are important and crucial and essential, actually, for the people who live, as you said, in uh, areas like mountain areas where there are there's a scarcity of resources and so in your view so what resources and solutions could be best placed to support working animals and obviously the people in the communities who depend on them well i think you know what are the solutions that we can provide them you know i think the first thing is to provide them with uh with, with 
with a support framework, with a locally trusted support framework where they can have people that know how to create the equines that can provide services such as ferry, such as salary, that they that they can provide them with uh, with you know good quality, um, with you know affordable services, and 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 that's one of the first things that you have to provide to them. I mean, I think these are people that are interested in their well-being of their of their of their equines. They just need that support framework where they can rely upon, you know, people that can that can you know help them, you know, if their equines is, is is sick or he has a disease or he has a problem with their hooves or or or, or do you have a problem with your pack saddle? Um, so they have that support framework, that locally trusted support framework, where 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 they are not left, you know, to their own devices to to try to. Uh, you know, to manage their accounts, but they have this, you know, community support framework where they can rely upon. I think that's that's one of the solutions. That's, I think that's one of the most important solutions that you can provide uh, to the working equines. And also working closely with um, uh, with local stakeholders. I mean, I think, um, I think community leaders, I think, uh, uh, you know, local community organizations are very important. To, to raise awareness and to and to and to give more support, not not just organizational support, but also financial support to these um, service providers, so they can continue providing these key um, services to the to the working equines and 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 and, and to the owners that depend on them. Thank you, Danilo. Thank you. Probably you did the most important resources and solutions that are actually there. Uh, to be implemented to support people, communities, and working animals. A fully functional framework and uh, cooperation, collaboration with stakeholders local, locally, as you said, but also probably nationally and regionally and so on. Um, I would like to conclude with one final question. In your opinion, what could be done in the future to keep supporting working animals and, again, the people who rely heavily on them? Well, I think um, I think the work is 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 big, and 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 you know we cannot do it all on on, on our own. Um, there are a lot of um, you know people that are interested in um, you know providing good welfare to working equines, and I think we need to we need to put them in the limelight. We need to we need to put them in the forefront. The working equines. We need to you know we need to show society at large because. I think I think one of the one of the main difficulties that we have is that there is a disconnect between between the government authorities or um, you know the civil society or the society in general in terms of how their food or how their natural resources are being used and and so, so there's a disconnect between you know the rural and and you know the urban um, areas of the economy and and the working equines play. A base role, you know, a very important role, a, a foundational role in terms of accessing natural resources and using natural resources, and and you know, a lot of people don't 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 under, un, understand that. So that's why you need to put that in the forefront. You need to tell them how um, working equine support uh, sustainable use of resources. Um, how they are so important in terms of the social and economic conditions of rural communities, and 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 they are part of the of, of, of the uh, of the development framework of 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 a country. You know, you know, you cannot have development in the country if you are leaving your rural communities outside, or 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 where you live in your peri-urban communities outside. So that's why, you know, you need to put working equines in the forefront, the work that they do, and the importance that they have in terms of, of um, you know, the, the, the development of this. So that's one of the things that you have to do. Danilo, thank you again for your invaluable contribution. Speak to you soon. In conclusion, We've seen how working animals not only hold in, in that value, but also provide considerable support to the people who rely on them by generating income, collecting vital resources, empowering women, and offering means of adaptation in the face of climate-related challenges. 
By bringing working animal welfare into cross-sectoral dialogue, we move a step closer to generating holistic planning, policies and programming that can enable simple intervention to have significant impact. If you'd like to know more about the relationship between water, working animals and the communities they support, join us for our interactive session on Wednesday entitled Often Visible, Rarely Seen, Working Animals and Water Resilience, or contact our colleagues attending the conference through Pathables chat and networking functions. In addition, if you would be keen to participate in further discussion about the role of working animals within sustainable development, we invite you to join the Working Animal Alliance, which is an informal group of stakeholders seeking to promote the role of working animals in delivering sustainable development and to expand the global dialogue for the mutual benefit of both humans and animals. Thank you.